Hey again, it's Christina from Sunshine and Flora. If you're new to my channel, I grow cut flowers in zone 5A in Northwest Iowa. And today I am inside starting my first seeds for the 2024 growing season. Some of you are probably thinking, whoa, that is super early. It is still 2023. Technically, yes, uh, we're in the second week of December, but the seeds that I am starting today are Lysianthus. And if you have grown them before, you know that they grow so slow. Usually I start my Lysianthus in January. However, these Lysianthus, I have three different varieties. These are going to be going in the hoop house, which I can plant out in much earlier than I can outside in the regular garden. So in this video, I wanna share with you the three varieties that I'm starting today, my whole process for starting them using a soil blocker, and then I wanna walk you guys out to the hoop house and show you what is growing in there right now uh, because I have some things wintering over and I honestly haven't checked it on them in a week or so. We've had some really cold temps, so I'm anxious myself to see how it's going, so I'm gonna take you guys out there too. So first of all, I have three varieties of Lysianthus. These came from Geo Seeds. Geo Seed uh, has wholesale prices, but I don't believe you actually have to have a tax ID number to order from them. And they have about every single variety of flower that you could ever dream of starting. So make sure to check them out. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I just really love to order seeds from them. The three varieties that I am starting are the ABC White 1. So uh, Lysianthus are labeled 1, 2, 3, or 4, and that is based on their bloom time. So 1 are the earliest, 4 are the latest. So the ABC White is a 1. I have the ABC Deep Rose, also a 1. And then I have the Arena Apricot, which is a three. So in theory, these two should bloom first about at the same time. And then I will get these two to bloom so that I have uh, different bloom times and extend my harvest for the Lysianthus. Um, now I'm going to be opening these up in a second, but uh, Lysianthus a lot of times will come pelleted. I don't think I've ever ordered any that were not pelleted. Um, I'll show you what they look like, but pelleted seeds they say you should use within a year um, or that growing season of buying them. So um, if I don't use all of these seeds today in my trays with my soil blocks, I will be using them yet this growing season in another planting. So I have in a little container here, I have my soil. I'll put a uh, picture up on the screen of the container. This is a ProMix BX. I'm gonna be wetting this down thoroughly to make my soil blocks. Um, this is my soil blocker. I will link this down below. I got this off Amazon. This is one of the mini soil blockers. And so I get 20 little soil blocks um, from one little um, pump of this, if that's what you call it. And then I'm gonna be starting these in meat trays. And so I just save these from when I get meat from the grocery store. I see a lot of different gardeners use this. They have nice sides and are really lightweight. And so I should be able to fit, um, I think two of these, so 40 little soil blocks in each tray. That will give me a good start for the hoop house. And then I'm gonna be saving more of these and then I will have more um, soil blocks of Lysianthus and lots of other flowers to start on my grow shelves throughout the winter. But this is what I'm gonna start for today. So the first thing I need to do is I need to wet down the soil because it is so dry, like I can literally see the dust. Um, pluming up from it. And that is really normal. I buy this in a block and so it's a compacted block. And so you get um, more per package than if you would just buy a bag of the loose soil. And so it's really dry. So I'm going to start off and this is going to take a little bit to absorb the water, but basically I'm just going to kind of mix it around. And when you make soil blocks, I think that you want um, the soil a lot wetter. Ooh, yeah, the dust is flying up. Um, you want the soil a lot um, wetter than if you were just putting it in a seed tray because you're going to really pack it in, which I'll show you, to the soil blocker because you want it to stay in there and you want the soil blocks to stay together for your seeds. 
Couple of the benefits of using a soil block, you can fit a lot more seedlings in a small space, so you can start a lot more at the same time. Um, the soil blocker, how they grow, also gives air movement to um, the plants and the roots, and so it really helps give you a strong root system for your new little plants. And with these mini soil blocks, um, a lot of times once these seedlings get so big, you will need to pot them up into a larger seed tray, but then that promotes the roots to grow even more. And I have seen where seedlings get a lot larger when you pot them up versus leaving them in the little mini soil blocks. And so that will be my plan with these lisianthus once they get so big, and I'll show you when that happens, I'm gonna be potting them up into larger seed trays. But this is how I'm gonna get started. So this is about the consistency right now that I would be using if I was putting in a seed tray, maybe even a little wetter. Usually I like to squeeze it and it's holding together, but no moisture drips out. This is dripping moisture, but I still think I need more for my soil blocker. So let me go grab a little bit more water. Okay, if I had to guess, I think that is gonna do it. Let me just mix this around a little bit more. Then I'll have to wash my hands. I don't really like to use gloves because I just feel like I can get things mixed a lot better if I don't have gloves on. Yeah, that is nice and wet. All right, time to rinse my hand off. So here's what my soil blocker looks like. And you can see on the bottom, each little square is going to hold one little soil block, which will go out onto the seed tray and hold one little seedling. So what I do is I take the soil blocker and you wanna get as much soil stuck into there as possible. Really press it down in. See how that's all in there? I could even use more in there. All right. Now, a lot of times people will have something to scrape it with that's flat. I'm just gonna kind of use my finger. Let's see how this sticks together. So you want to press down and then you press down on there, which presses out the soil blocks. Oh my gosh, look at that. Those look so good. Let's do it again. All right, so I have my three trays of soil blocks made. And when I go to water these, these trays really work nice because all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour water in around the soil blocks and the soil blocks will absorb the water that is sitting in this tray. And that's how I water them. It'll be super easy. So um, I'm not sure if you can see this on the camera, but within each square, there is a little um, kind of sunken down indentation on each soil block that's where I'm gonna set the seed in. And my Lysiantha seeds that are pelleted come in these vials. Pelleted seeds are really easy to plant because it makes them much bigger. Um, this is the Arena 3 Apricot. So once I'm done putting these seeds in here, I'm gonna need to label this because I never remember which tray is which. And I'm just simply going to drop one seed per soil block right in that indentation. It is so easy. Some people will use a toothpick, um, a moist toothpick to um, pick up the seed and then drop it on the soil block. I am never very good at that, so I just like to use my fingers. 
Now with uh, seeds that are very small, like a Snapdragon seed, sometimes that is really handy. Um, but with pelleted seeds like this, I just like to use my hand. Okay, so my extra seeds are gonna go back into the vial and they'll get started probably in about a month and that'll be my succession planting for these. I will probably do a whole video on succession planting this year for you guys um, with all the different varieties that I'm going to be succession planting. And if you're not familiar with that method, basically it's planting your seeds at different stages so that you get multiple harvests per variety. So Arena 3 Apricot is done. I'm gonna grab some tape to mark this. So I just like to use plain masking tape to mark these and I'll put the tape on the side. So Arena apricot oh I should put the date 12 6 okay so it's labeled right on the side there time to do the next two Okay, so my Lysiantha seeds are all in the soil blocks. The next thing I need to do is mist them in. I will link this mister down below. I absolutely love it. Basically, you just pump the top of it, and then it has its little trigger right here, and then it's a continuous spray, and it makes misting seeds in so fast. I'm just gonna go over it a few times. What this is gonna do is not only put a little more moisture into the soil blocks, but it's gonna settle that seed so that it stays in place and it's gonna start breaking down that pelleted coating so that the seed can, can adhere to the soil. So I'm gonna mist all of them in. All right, looking good. Now, Lysiantha seeds need light to germinate, so that means you don't want to fully cover them with soil. But the one thing that I do add to my Lysianthus is vermiculite, and this will help algae growth from developing on top of the soil. Lysianthus are in the soil blocks or their seed starting containers for so long, it's really common for algae to develop, and this will help um, to not let that happen. So this is just the Burpee Natural brand. I got this at my my local garden store. Inver this is the um, fine grade, so it's going to be really small. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sprinkle this over the top. Just like that, kind of like a topping, like if you're, you know, putting toppings on something that you're baking which is kind of a weird comparison, but these kind of look like brownies. Not brownies that I would want to eat. All right, a little bit more. Okay, so this is what the end result looks like. Now for a humidity dome, I need to cover these with saran wrap to keep the moisture in there while these seeds are germinating. Okay, all three of my trays are ready. It's time to move them under the grow lights. So this is one of my grow light setups and it's a really easy and economical setup. I've done videos on it before. I will link those down below. But basically, this is a plastic shelving unit I got from a local home improvement store. I have a heat mat that I got from Amazon. I have, um, this is a 10 by 20 or a 20 by 20 size. I also have a lot of 10 by 10 or 10 by 20 sizes. And then these are shop lights. You don't need the really expensive grow lights to start your seeds. Shop lights are just fine. I find that the 4,000 lumen shop lights work well for me. I have two per shelf and my heat mat is already plugged in, which I will leave on until the seeds germinate. Once I see germination, the heat mat goes away. And then basically, I just turn on my grow lights. Now, I will leave these on full time also until I see germination, 
Once I see all of these lisianthus seeds germinate, I'll take them off the heat mat. I will take the saran wrap off, keeping the soil block still moist, of course. And then these grow lights will go on a timer, which I also got these off Amazon. I will link these down below. Basically, it's 16 hours on and eight hours off. So your plants get a break from that light just like they would outside. So these are really handy, but this does not get put on my light system until these germinate. So anyway, those are ready to go. Now I just wait to see what happens. Now Lysianthus, of course, are slow growing. These could take a couple weeks to germinate. Um, while they are sitting on the heat mat, I'm gonna see some moisture start to form on top of the saran wrap. And I just basically wanna make sure that under the saran wrap, I keep those soil blocks nice and moist. So I may every few days miss them, but um, they should pretty much be good to go. So now that those are started, I do want to take you out to the hoop house to give you a quick peek of where these will be planted and show you what I have growing in there right now. All right, here we are. So it's December here in Iowa. So out in the garden, there definitely isn't anything growing, but here in the hoop house, things are looking really green. So right over here, I have a patch of fever few. This is going to winter over. Uh, right here, this is all ranunculus that I never dug up, and it's looking really good. I don't see any blooms. I don't know if it'll bloom or not, but I'm just going to leave them to see what happens. And then over here, we have some stock that could pretty much be pulled out because it's not going to do anything. Um, in here are some campanula seedlings that I planted really, really late. However, if you zoom in, you can see that there is new green growth in the center. So I think they'll be just fine. I actually probably need to get out here and give these a good watering because it's unbelievably 60 degrees today. Then back in the corner, I have some more ranunculus that I'm just letting go to see if anything happens. But if we spin around, look at this patch of Campanula. Do these not look absolutely amazing? This is all white Campanula. These are going to winter over and give me a really early crop next year. I am so excited. This is what the other patch of Campanula should have looked like, but I planted it really late. But these are just looking absolutely amazing. So the Lysianthus, when those get going and I plant them out, they will probably end up going in this area. So this hoop house space has just been awesome in the last year for me. I just did a video talking about the entire hoop house, but this is from Grower Solutions. It's a 16 by 28 low sidewall greenhouse. And I will put a coupon code up on the screen where you can save 10% off your entire hoop house purchase. Here's a look from the outside. We did the end wall kit so we can walk in and the side of it. I still have my shade cloth on, that needs to come up. And I still need to put a little wiggle wire down on the sides here on the roll up sides just to tuck it in for winter. But I'm telling you, I could have about 10 of these and probably not have enough. Okay, so that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing my first seed starting for the 2024 growing season. Uh, since these next couple days are in the 60s, I actually still have some daffodils to plant outside. So, which is super crazy for December that we're having this weather. But tomorrow I'm going to be planting more daffodil bulbs outside and probably some peonies. So I will make sure to film that for you guys. But um, I have a lot more to share throughout the winter as far as what I'm planting for next year, my full garden plans, and of course building updates for the retail space. So anyway, stay tuned for a lot more. We'll see you soon.